Good morning, everyone. Bonjour, tout le monde. Thank you for joining us here today. Merci de vous joindre à nous aujourd'hui. My name is Mark Butler. I'm the Director of Communications for Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority, and it's my pleasure to act as your MC today. For anyone tweeting or participating in social media about today's event, I encourage you to use the event hashtag HowBridge2018. But right now, before you do any of that, please ensure that your cell phones are turned off, at least the ringers, you can have it in vibrate mode. First of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Vincent Georgi, who I think is here, uh, and his staff for hosting us today at this incredible facility, the University of Windsor School of Creative Arts. I'd also like to welcome in the audience today, Windsor Mayor Drew Dilkins, Tecumseh Mayor uh, McNamara, Essex Warden Tom Bain, Brian Massey, a member of Parliament, reps from MP Van Kesteren and Nichols' office, Windsor Councillors Elliot Bartolini and Morcelli, people from the Council General of Detroit, the Governor's Office, and well, Michigan well, Department of Transportation. Fireworks. There are many more. Thank you for coming. Sitting to uh, my right is Heather Grandin. Vice President of Stakeholder Relations and Communications for Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority. Sitting next to uh, Heather is Andre Junot, our Interim Chief Executive Officer at WDBA. And finally, Dwight Duncan, the Chair of the Board of Directors of Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority. First of all, some housekeeping items. Today's agenda includes a technical presentation given by Ms. Gondon. It'll be available on our website at www. Uh, wdbridge.com following today's event. Following the technical presentation, Dwight Duncan, our chair, and Andre Junot, our interim chief executive officer, will deliver some remarks. Following those presentations, we'll be taking questions from the media. I would ask that at that time you identify yourself by your media affiliation and your name. For me, members of other guests here today, if you have questions, would you please uh, approach Heather or I, and we'll be happy to answer them following that uh, uh, media Q&A period. We also have a tour of the Canadian and the U.S. ports of entry site for the media only, immediately following today's event. That will start at 10.30. We will have a bus at the front. I would remind you to have your appropriate uh, identification, passport, nexus card, or whatever you need to get across the border. That will be starting at 10.30. We expect to be back in Windsor at approximately 1.30. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do drop off or pick up along the way. I encourage you to take part of this uh, because soon we will have a little bit more restrictive ac access to our ports of entry and won't be able to offer the tours as much. There will be opportunities at the ports of entry, both in Canada and the United States, to take video and fit, uh, photos as well as have some interviews. <laughs> Uh, so again, I encourage the media to join us. So to start today's agenda, Heather Grondin, Vice President of Communications and Stakeholder Relations, will provide a project update and technical briefing on the Gordie Howe International Bridge. Heather? Thank you everyone for being with us today. Sorry, WWJ's microphone, I'm just going to move it. Is that okay? There we go. As Mark stated, for anyone who will be uh, joining the conversation via social media today, uh, please use the hashtag Gordy How, uh, sorry, How Bridge 2018. Uh, we look forward to hearing uh, what everyone has to say about today's announcement and to be having an active conversation with those of you both in this room and outside watching, uh, watching us virtually. So to get started, uh, for the presentation today, I'm going to be covering project overview, including the history of the project, how we got to where we are today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the preparatory activities that have been underway at both the Canadian and U.S. sides of the border, and I'll talk to some, in some length about the procurement process that we have been undertaking, and most recently the evaluation process that we've undertaken to lead us to today. Uh, before I get to that, I would like to talk just quickly about the Canada-U.S. trade relationship. Um, it's a very important trading relationship and very important for this region itself. Canada is the U.S.'s largest customer and the top export destination for 30 U.S. states, including Michigan. 
with more than 2.6 million trucks per year using the existing Winter Detroit crossing. The Winter Detroit Gateway is the busiest commercial land border crossing on the Canada U.S. border. Uh, was incorporated in 2012 with staffing and uh, staffing and operations beginning in 2014. Our mandate is to deliver the Gordie Howe International Bridge as a public-private partnership using a design, build, finance, operate, and maintain delivery model. We're also responsible for project oversight and to set and collect goals. Uh, we report to Parliament through the Minister of Infrastructure and Community. We are overseen by a board of directors. And we're also, uh, in, we're also overseen by our international authority made up of Canadian and U.S. representatives who monitor compliance with the crossing agreement signed between Canada and Michigan in 2012. Steady DBA works with numerous partners, which is critically important for this international undertaking. Um, very closely with states, provincial, U.S. federal, and Canadian federal agencies. And importantly, we work very closely with representatives from the City of Windsor and the City of Detroit. So I'll spend a little bit of time on how we got here today. In terms of project history, I'm sure everyone in this room is familiar with the Detroit River International Crossing Study, or what was known as the DRIC Study. The DRIC Study was sought to provide for the safe, efficient, and secure movement of people and goods across the Canada-U.S. border at Windsor and Detroit or in the Detroit River area to, to support the economies of Ontario, Michigan, Canada, and the U.S. It's a location where, they could, where a construction of a new end-to-end -end border transportation system could be done. There were four key regional transportation goals that were to be achieved with the end-to-end -end border transportation system um, identified through the Detroit River International Crossing Study. It sought for a new transportation system to provide redundancy and crossing choice. It sought to provide a transportation system that could provide for improved border processing capabilities. It sought to provide uh, improved capacity uh, to address future long-term travel demand. And it also sought to provide improved system connectivity or highway-to-highway -highway connectivity. <coughs> So it's been a long road to get us where we're at today. I am not going to go over each and every point on this and the next slide. We do not have that much time. But a few of the key highlights that I would like to address is that in the year 2000, the border transportation ship was formed by the governments of Canada, the US, Ontario, and Michigan. They undertook a planning need and feasibility study between 2002 and 2003. This led to the DRIC study between 2005 and 2009. In 2009, the U.S. Record of Decision was obtained, as well as approvals under the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act and the Ontario Environmental Assessment Act. In 2012, the crossing agreement between Canada and Michigan was signed. This enabled the building of the new publicly owned crossing between Windsor and Detroit. The U.S. State Department issued a presidential permit in 2013, and the U.S. Post Guard permit was achieved in 2014. 2015 was also a very big year on this project, uh, the International Authority approved U.S. land acquisition. Um, the project was officially named the Gordie Howe International Bridge. We began preparatory activities at the site of the Canadian Port of Entry, and our P3 procurement process began. In 2016, that momentum continued. Our preparatory works were ongoing. We continued with our P3 procurement process, and we held very well-attended business-to-business meetings, allowing for businesses um, and associations to meet with our three proponent teams. In 2017, we announced that a multi-use path would be included in the, on the uh, International Bridge. And in 2018, we've announced that we're moving forward and planning for our, post -constru our construction phase with the award of our owner's engineer contract. So when I talk about the Gordie Howe International Bridge, I'm talking about four key components. I'm talking about the bridge itself, the Canadian Port of Entry, the U.S. Port of Entry, and a connection into Interstate 75. Regarding the bridge, the DRIC study allowed for two different design types to be looked at and examined and, and be feasible for this project. One was a suspension bridge, which is recognized by an elongated a M shape, or a cable stay bridge, which is more recognizable as A shaped. The bridge has six lanes, three Canada bound and three US bound, and there are no piers in the water. The, br oh, sorry. the bridge will be designed to have a 125 year lifespan, 
And an interesting aspect of this bridge is that the main bridge will be dual designed, meeting the requirements of both Canadian and US building legislation. Here you see a cross section of the bridge and you will specifically note on this um, the multi-use path for pedestrians and cyclists. In real life, this path will be on the east side of the bridge with a view toward downtown Detroit. Regarding the Canadian port of entry, uh, the site is approximately 53 hectares or 130 acres, making this the largest ca Canadian port along the Canada-US uh, border and one of the largest ports of entry anywhere in North America. The Canadian port of entry will include inbound border inspection facilities, outbound inspection facilities, toll collection facilities, a maintenance facility, and parking. Regarding the U.S. port of entry, it has an approximate size of 68 hectares or 167 acres, making it one of the largest U.S. border and again one of the largest ports anywhere in North America. It includes U.S. inbound border inspection facilities, U.S. outbound inspection facilities, commercial exit control booths, and parking. The Michigan interchange to Interstate 75 consists of primary connecting ramps to and from the U.S. port of entry and associated local road improvements that are required due to this project. In terms of community features, in addition to those main project components that I just discussed, the Gordie Howe International Bridge includes many features that will directly benefit the communities of Windsor and Detroit. These include things like local road improvements, noise walls, and new native trees and vegetation that will be planted as part of the project's landscape. A very critical aspect of this project is the requirement to include a community benefit plan. This requirement was set out in the crossing agreement that I mentioned earlier. WDBA has undertaken extensive consultation starting in 2015 with community members, First Nation groups, business associations, and not-for-profit agencies to gather ideas and suggestions of what people would like to see included in a community benefits plan for this project. We've received well over 230 unique ideas and suggestions, all of which fall into generally these five categories that you see on this slide. What people would like to see included in this project are community partnerships, mitigation of construction and operation impacts, community safety and connections, and particularly connections into the multi-use path that will be included on the bridge, local workforce and training strategies, and aesthetics and landscaping. For our process, we have provided all of those ideas and suggestions to the three proponent teams who are participating in our request for proposal stage of our P3 procurement. Um, they have taken those ideas and we may be able to factor those into the plans that they're developing. After we reach financial close and our private sector partner is officially on board, they will be responsible for delivering their community benefits plan with very stringent oversight at, by WDBA along with public reporting. As part of the oversight process, a regional community benefits group will be struck to provide feedback. Membership will consist of both Canadian and U.S. stakeholders and we look forward to releasing more information about that um, after financial close. WDBA really does recognize the important role it plays in the Windsor Detroit communities and in this region for many, many years to come. We are active supporters of United Way and other fundraising campaigns. Uh, we have hosted three very well attended events at our Canadian Port of Entry site, allowing for the community to come see the site and experience construction firsthand. We have, if you've attended a community event over the last year, you may have seen a WDBA booth. During the past year, we've out, been out and about at a number of community events, such as Open Streets Windsor, Open Streets Detroit, and Earth Day um, at Malden Park. In addition, we, we regularly present at Rotary Clubs, Lock Clubs, Business Associations, and other community agencies. And we always welcome invitations to come to your group uh, to give a project update. A key priority for us at WDBA is to outreach to and engage youth on this project. In Windsor, we've provided uh, presentations to local schools as well as judged bridge building competitions. With our partners at the Michigan Department of Transportation, we've spoken to Detroit area middle school students at the Michigan Construction Expo about skilled trades jobs. And we also recently held um, a youth art program that received a, a number of responses, which for those of you in the room can see displayed on our side wall. We're often asked about jobs and job creation related to this project. With the Gordie Howe International Bridge Project, there will be strong demand for workers in the Detroit-Windsor region 
not only through the construction phase, but also, also through the operations phase. Regional alignment is for jobs on both sides of the border. Point out that in 2017, Workforce Windsor Essex completed a study of the jobs most likely, likely to be in demand for the Gordie Howe International Bridge project. You can review the results of that study at workforcewindsoressex.com. And just for an example of, of some of our hiring to date, for our preparatory activities, which I'll talk about in a couple of minutes, in Canada, more than 575 workers have received the required training to be able to work on the site, and that represents employees about 50 different companies. In Detroit, over, over 20 disadvantaged business enterprises have also been hired to date. Speaking about preparatory activities, to facilitate the construction that will be undertaken by our future P3 partner, WDBA has, un been, has undertaken preparatory activities both on the Windsor side of the project and the US side of the project. On the, at the site of the Canadian Port of Entry, We've placed more than 1 million tons of granular fill to help raise the elevations of that site. Uh, that included the placement of about 42,000 wick drains to prepare the soil for future construction. Under construction is a new four kilometer perimeter access road. And we've also undertaken an extensive network of existing overhead underground utilities and relocation outside of the port of entry. Another significant part of our activities at the Canadian Port of Entry has been our work with Hydro One to remove overhead lines that need to be removed underground so that they're not in the way of the, of the coming bridge span. As I mentioned earlier, one of our achievements this year was the naming of our owner's engineer, which is Parsons. They will work directly with us um, once the construction phase begins. They will support us, WDBA, as the owner of the project through design review, providing technical advice and monitoring and overseeing the construction activities of our private sector partner. Another key activity at the site of the Canadian Port of Entry relates to the protection of species at risk. The area to host the, the site of the Canadian Port of Entry is home to, special, to several species at risk. And the environmental, environmental protection and mitigation of these species is an important part of our undertaking. To date, experts have removed or relocated roughly 1,000 rare or at-risk species, species at risk and animals. The existing Broadway drain was reconstructed to accommodate future needs. And a special feature of the, of the Broadway drain included a hibernacula constructed for at-risk snakes in the area. Moving on to work on the U.S. side, our partners at the Michigan Department of Transportation are responsible for property acquisition for all required lands on the U.S. side. Over 60 land parcels were required for the project, and to date, uh, MDOT has over 90% of that uh, property under their control. Additional work that's taking place at the site of the U.S. Port of Entry is utility relocation. WDBA and the Michigan Department of Transportation are working with uh, Sorry, I was just told to move my hair. I'm not doing that because I'm egomaniacal. I just am moving it. Uh, WDBA and MDOT are working with utilities and other partner agencies to identify high priority priority areas where utilities need to be moved away from the U.S. Uh, many utilities are many utility relocations are either completed or well on their way to being completed. To help alert residents both on the Canadian and U.S. side of the border of construction activities. WDBA, on a weekly basis, issues construction notices that are posted on our website, on social media, and are posted at community agencies to help people understand the work that's going on that week. One more important piece of work being undertaken is the relocation and replacement of several siphons and combined sewer crossings beneath I-75. This work is being completed in, in conjunction with the I-75 inlay project being conducted by uh, the Michigan Department of Transportation. Now I'd like to move into a uh, discussion about our P3 procurement process. As I've stated earlier, the Gordie Howe International Bridge Project will be delivered as a public-private partnership, or a P3. Uh, we're currently very close to wrapping up that P3 procurement process, and the model that we're using is design, build, finance, operate, and maintain. There are many benefits to, a P th to applying a P3 model to this project. Risks are appropriately shared between the government and the private sector. A whole life approach is used in the delivery of the project. The private sector's expertise, efficiencies, and innovation are utilized. And the private sector partner is paid on performance. 
A very important aspect of a, this P3 procurement has been the selection through an open procurement process of a fairness monitor. The fairness monitor has been engaged by WDBA uh, for the entire length of this procurement process to act as an objective third-party observer, observer and to ensure that the process is conducted in a fair, open, and transparent manner. As I stated, we're using a design, build, finance, operate, and maintain model with the bridge and the two ports of entry uh, being delivered by our private sector partner uh, with that model. For the Michigan Interchange, uh, our private sector partner will design, build, and finance that component with the operations and maintenance being handed over to the Michigan Department of Transportation once completed. In terms of the steps in our P3 procurement process, we've, we've followed industry best practices and taken a two-stage approach to this process. The first stage was our request for qualification stage, which began in July of 2015. Teams made up of Canadian, American, and international companies participated in that RFQ process, and six different teams responded to our request for qualifications. The, re the responses to the request for qualifications were evaluated by teams made up of public and private sector experts, and again, overseen by our fairness monitor. The three highest scoring teams who responded to the request for qualifications were moved forward to our second stage, the request for proposals stage. This slide shows some of the evaluation factors that we used in that evaluation of the responses to the request for qualifications. Some of the things that we looked at were the respondents' approach to partnering, their approach and experience to the, of the design team, and the approach and experience of the construction team. We then moved into the second phase of our procurement process, which was the request for proposals stage. That began in November of 2016. The RFP, or request for proposals, sets out the conditions and specifications required to deliver the Gordie Howe International Bridge project. Proponents were tasked with preparing and submitting their binding technical and financial proposals with a fixed price and construction schedule. WDBA worked very closely with all three proponent teams throughout this open period stage and had ongoing dialogue through commercially confidential meetings and a request for information process. The request for proposals under, then began, were, sorry, the responses to the request for proposals then were, un, were subject to an evaluation process. And some of the evaluation categories that we looked at included project management, bridge design, port of entry design, Michigan Interchange Design, Tolling ITS, Community Benefits, and Aesthetics. As I stated, the proposals from the three proponents were very rigorously evaluated, and they were evaluated by teams comprised of experts from Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority, our owner's engineer, the Michigan Department of Transportation, CBSA, CBP, and other government departments and consultants with experience in very dis various disciplines, including legal, engineering and finance. WDBA looked for the proposal that best met the requirements set out in the request for proposals and provides the best value to deliver the project requirements. The proponent with the highest overall score becomes our preferred proponent. Ensuring that the evaluation process is seamless and, and reliable is an important aspect of the P3 procurement process. The credibility of the evaluation very much depends on the expertise and independence of the evaluators and the degree of transparency of the evaluation process. All of our evaluators were reputable subject matter experts that underwent mandatory training in advance of beginning the evaluation process and participated in team consensus meetings that were overseen by our fairness monitor. No single evaluator ever saw the entire proposal package or any of the scores. Evaluation team members represented a balance of staff um, and stakeholder and partners, and they were assessed through a consultative process between WDBA and its partners. Proposals were evaluated first individually without discussion with other evaluation team members, followed by a team consensus meeting. Final scores were established by consensus in the presence of a fairness monitor. So in terms of next steps, um, in July, we anticipate the start of advanced construction in Michigan. This is somewhat similar to some of the early works that we have started here on the Canadian side. Um, the final step in our procurement process will be financial close. That is when all of the contractual negotiations have been completed, our project agreement is finalized, and we are able to officially announce our private sector partner. 
We expect to hit that point to hit financial close by at the end of September of this year. Once financial close is reached, uh, that's when WDBA will be in a position to publicly announce the contract value as well as the construction value of, or sorry, the construction schedule for this project. As a reminder, uh, for project updates and stay, to stay uh, well informed about the project, we encourage everyone to follow us on our social media sites, uh, to visit our webpage, wdbridge.com. And we're always welcome to uh, answer questions or meet with folks if they would like more information about the project. Uh, with that, I will hand this back over to Mark. Thank you, Heather. Um, I would like to remind people that we're doing this on Facebook Live today. I'm just being uh, reliably informed that we have over 400 unique hits. Uh, and that includes the people back at our Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority offices, our staff who are taking a much long uh, deserved break. Uh, but they only get another hour and then they're back at the, at the work. Uh, I'd like to introduce now Dwight Duncan with WDBA's uh, chair, uh, board chair. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see such a large crowd here and so many familiar faces. Thanks to all of you for your continued interest in the Gordie Howe International Bridge Project. Before I go further, I would like to acknowledge Bryce Phillips, who has joined us here today. Bryce, please stand up. Bryce has recently been named the new Chief Executive Officer for the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority. Bryce was appointed to this role following an open, transparent, and merit-based process led by the Government of Canada. His first day will be July 16th, and he is bringing extensive experience in leadership and in infrastructure to WDBA. I and the rest of the Board of Directors, and I'm joined here by uh, three of our members of the Board of Directors, and you'll be pleased to know that there are now three local members of the Board of Directors. Uh, I'll introduce all of them, Marie Campagna, Mike Mueller, and joining us from Toronto on our Board of Directors is Judy Cohen. Welcome to all three of you, and thanks for all of your efforts. I should tell you, I first uh, met Bryce uh, many years ago when I had a 32-inch waist and he had a full head of hair. Uh, he uh, was very involved at uh, Ontario Power Generation for many years. And the added bonus of this is Bryce is born and raised in Windsor and his wife and family have returned to the region to live here. And uh, we welcome you home, Bryce, and uh, looking forward to working with you. I would be remiss if I didn't say merci beaucoup uh, à André Junot, notre chef, pour le, pendant les derniers neuf mois. André ça va assumer beaucoup de responsabilités pour le procurement. Procurement, je ne sais pas le mot français, mais I butcher my French as it is, you know that. Uh, but I think André, our, our community, the board of Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority, owe you a debt of gratitude uh, for taking on the responsibilities you did. Thank you very, very much. Andre will be staying on the Board of Directors and uh, he has developed a, a fascination with our region, its heritage, uh, including the Michigan side. He's a frequent visitor to the Detroit Institute of Arts and other, other spots and uh, so we're delighted that you'll be staying on the board. You have no doubt had a chance to see the art artwork around the room. These pieces of art were submitted by over 100 local students from communities on both sides of the border in response to our Show Us Your Bridge Art Challenge. Their artwork depicts their vision of the Gordie Howe International Bridge. Let's just take a moment to applaud these creative students. <laughs> now to get down to business. Almost a decade ago, on November 5th, 2010, I, along with my colleagues, made a similar type of announcement as what we are gathered here for today. That announcement was for the Right Honorable Herb Gray Parkway. As you know, the parkway was the first piece of infrastructure completed for the new Windsor Detroit Gateway end-to-end -end border transportation system identified through the most extensive environmental assessment undertaken in Ontario's history. The parkway ensures the safe and efficient movement of people, goods, and services to the Gordie Howe International Bridge, 
separates local and international traffic, and eliminates stop and go traffic in residential areas. The project was a major catalyst for job creation, other public projects, and partnerships. It's also a shining example of successful public-private partnership. The need for a second crossing at the busiest commercial land border crossing between Canada and the United States has been recognized by the Canadian, US, Ontario, and Michigan governments. Once in service, the Gordie Howe International Bridge will address four regional transportation needs and enhance the international trading relationship of the two countries. The Gordie Howe International Bridge will provide improved system connectivity. Passenger and commercial traffic will have direct connections to Highway 401 in Ontario and the Interstate, the Interstate 75 in Michigan. No other crossing at the critical Windsor-Detroit trade corridor offers this. Our bridge will provide additional border crossing capacity and provide six lanes and a multi-use path for pedestrians and cyclists. The Gordie Howe International Bridge will provide improved border processing capabilities with state-of-the-art technology. It will offer dedicated fast nexus lanes and separated truck, automotive, pedestrian, and cyclist lanes. And lastly, it will provide redundancy and provide an alternative border crossing. Now I'll take just a moment to speak about public-private partnerships, otherwise known as P3s, and why the Gordie Howe International Bridge is being delivered under this model. Governments have always relied on the private sector's expertise to design and build infrastructure. The decision to use a P3 followed a rigorous financial and technical analysis and independent business case, which concluded that a public-private partnership would be the most cost-effective method to deliver the project. It is quite appropriate for a complex project like this to be delivered using a P3. There are also many benefits to this model. Under a P3 arrangement, the private sector partner is responsible to deliver the project at a predetermined price and are paid on performance. This allows for a good balance of risk sharing between the government and the private sector partner and provides financial certainty to the government and to taxpayers. It also offers guarantees that the infrastructure will be well maintained for the duration of the project agreement. So as you can see, a public-private partnership is just that. It is a partnership. In this case, a long-term partnership that will last 30 years once the crossing is in service. I should add we've done more than 100 P3 projects in Ontario alone, many, many more across Canada, and Canada is behind places like Australia and most jurisdictions in Europe. This is nothing new to our province and it is the right way to go. And now for our announcement. I'm pleased to announce today the name of the preferred proponent that we will work with to deliver the Gordie Howe International Bridge. This team met all of the technical requirements set out in the request for proposal and is comprised of some of the most recognized leaders in the construction infrastructure industry worldwide. Following an intensive, open, and fair evaluation process, the Windsor-Detroit Bridge Authority has selected Bridging North America as the preferred proponent to design, build, finance, operate, and maintain the Gordie Howe International Bridge. We have representatives from Bridging North America with us today, and I ask them to stand and be recognized. Alfonso Sanchez, Mark Platillo, Mark Platillo, Tom Middlebrook, Alberto Nieto, Eduardo Ganares, and Sudarsan Sridhar. Welcome to all of you, and thank you very much for joining us. I want to thank you for your hard work over the duration of the WDBA's P3 procurement process. I offer congratulations to all three of our proponents for the phenomenal amount of outstanding work that they put into their submissions, but as with any competitive procurement process, 
there can only be one left in the end. You know, at one point there was more than 700 people working on each of the project groups on this, uh, on this important project. This is an exciting time for the WDBA and for communities on both sides of the border. The selection of bridging North America as the preferred proponent is another vital and important step forward towards start of the construction of the Gordie Howe International Bridge, the largest infrastructure project along the Canada-US border, and one which will stimulate the economies in both Canada and the United States. This is history in the making. Construction of the long-awaited Gordie Howe International Bridge will start later this month. I'm very proud to be here today to be part of it, to share this announcement with you, and to look forward to the exciting building of our new bridge, which will bridge our two countries, which will bridge our communities, which will provide jobs and economic growth for all of us on both sides of the border. Congratulations to Bridging North America. And there's more to come. Uh, for the members of the media and the audience, uh, we do have all the material that is being announced today. It will be given in the press kit. I uh, hope you appreciate it. We couldn't give it out before that. Uh, we made the announcement. Uh, that will be available to you as you leave. And now, without any further ado, Andre Genot, our Interim Chief Executive Officer. On behalf of all the employees at Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority, I offer my, as well my congratulations to Bridging North America. We look forward to working with you over the course of the coming months to conclude our contract negotiations. When I spoke to a group of executives from BNA on the evening of the 3rd, one of you, I'm not sure which one, it was on the phone, said that the goal was to make this crossing the best in the world. We really appreciate that thought, and we hope we can do that together. <laughs> Over the past few weeks, more than 60 individuals with experience in various disciplines, including engineering, law, and finance from WDBA and our partner agencies, agencies such as the Michigan Trans Department of Transportation, Canada Border Services Agency, Customs and Border Protection in the U.S., our owners, engineer, and other government uh, agencies have spent countless hours reviewing the technical and financial submissions of the three proponent teams. Now, let me tell you, this was no small undertaking. As I understand it, truckloads of boxes containing thousands of pages were delivered by the proponents to our offices here in Windsor and to our, uh, the offices of our law firm in Toronto. When the first set of boxes were delivered, there was a um, uh, it stopped traffic on Olette Street right outside our office. That's how many trucks BNA had to deliver all the boxes. Uh, I, I'm not supposed to know it was BNA, but my, I'm, I'm well informed. <laughs> I, know, I know that many of you have followed this project closely over the years. As, as Heather has said, our road to select the preferred proponent started in mid-2015 with the issuance of the Request for Qualifications, or RFQ. We received six submissions for consideration, and we eventually, after a thorough review, chose three respondent teams uh, and announced them in 2016. I've been told, as uh, Dwight has already said, over 2,000 people from the various uh, firms involved in the groups were working on the project. The, the procurement process was rigorous, overseen by an independent fairness monitor to ensure it is fair, open, and transparent, consistent with be best P3 practices. It's been run independently of political involvement or influence from WDBA's board of directors or the International Authority. We've left it up to our well-qualified team of experts to guide us here today, and we'll continue to rely on their expertise. I think we Heather and Dwight have already said this, the, the point is being made so that you're really clear that I was not involved in the, in the process. The Bridging North America team is comprised of a, 
is a consortium made up of Canadian, American, and international firms, including ACS Infrastructure Canada, Dragados Canada Incorporated, Fluor Canada Limited, and others. These firms have worked on some very substantial infrastructure projects. The Right Honourable Herb Gray Parkway that you heard about, the new Champlain Bridge Corridor in Montreal, Highway 30 in Montreal, which I'm pleased to say I was involved in starting in a previous life. Uh, it had many starts, I was part of one of them. Eglinton Crosstown LRT in Toronto, Le Réseau Express Métropolitain à Montréal, Aut the automated people mover at LAX Airport. There'll be a test later for s to see who knows what LAX is. The Harbor Bridge and Tappan Zee Bridge in New York, and San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge. And now I'd like to make an announcement that you've been waiting for. I'm very pleased to announce officially that the Bridging North America design will see the Gordie Howe International Bridge, <coughs> excuse me, constructed as a cable stay bridge. The Gordie Howe International Bridge will have the longest main span of any cable stayed bridge in North America at 853 meters with towers rivaling the height of the Renaissance Center. The bridge will be a landmark structure for this region and across North America. While we've announced bridging North America as our preferred proponent, we still have some work to do. Between now and the end of September, <coughs> we, uh, partnership details will be negotiated as part of the contract, including project cost and design. Once finalized, both WDBA and bridging North America will be legally bound and obligated to our commitments. Following the, conclusions of the conclusion of negotiations, known as financial close, we'll be ready for the main event that we've all been looking forward to, the start of, cons of major construction. Construction with a big C, as I call it. Our momentum continues with the selection of bridging North America, and we look forward to completing the negotiations. I would like to, um, before I conclude my remarks, I would like to uh, acknowledge in particular the amazing and thoughtful work done by all vice presidents of the WDBA in this process. Linda Hurdle, Marta Leandri Anderson, Leslie Martin, and, and Heather um, Grondon. You've seen what Heather does. The work of the other uh, vice presidents, I have to tell you, is, has been critical to this and we've not, we would have not gotten as far. I do have, I have to do this too. All right. So again, I would like to ask the two senior people representing Bridging North America, Alfonso Sanchez, Vice President, Project Development, I ACS Infrastructure Canada, and Tom Middlebrook, Senior Vice President of Business Development Canada, Dragodos Canada, to help us unveil the design that everyone is waiting to see. I'm not too sure what that look is all about when you're standing in a podium and people are putting something in front of your face. So, uh, but I am the MC, so I'm going to continue this. So we'll take some questions uh, from the media. Again, if I could ask you to identify yourself by your name and your media affiliation. I think we had John.
That's correct. They will operate the bridge and the two ports of entry. Hi, it's Adele from Blackbird Reviews. And uh, before we were told that when you had made the proponent, you would have a better idea what the final crossing could look like. Um, I know that you won't do that entirely until construction starts, but do we have a better idea at this point what the final cost could be? So as Heather had indicated in the uh, technical briefing, we are now going to be working with uh, Bridging North America to breach what's known as financial close. We'll have that by the end of September of this year. And at that point in time, we'll be able to announce the contract costs as well as more substantive details about the timeline and, and service date. Uh, Teresina from AM800. Uh, what commitment does Bridging North America have to hiring local Local hiring and contracting is a very important priority for Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority uh, for this project. We've heard loud and clear from businesses from the cities of Windsor and cities of Detroit that that is a priority for this project. Um, in many construction projects, and specifically in P3 construction projects, when international teams are coming to a region to construct a project, they very much rely heavily on local knowledge, local workers, local con contractors to get the job done. These are the people who know the site the best, who know this community the best, who know the suppliers the best, and can deliver this job most precisely um, according to a tough schedule and according to a dollar. So we very much expect <coughs> that local hiring, local contracting will play very strongly into Bridging North America's approach to construct this project. Do we have a number in terms of how many people will be No, there? we don't. Dawson? Um, I'm going to actually um, maybe, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll attempt it. <laughs> and I'm going to preface this by saying I am not an engineer. Um, there are two design types that we could have used, which would actually would cross the span of the Detroit River. One is called suspension, one is cable stay. Each of them have uh, unique advantages. Um, I, I will leave it up to the, uh, the consortium to tell you more detail, but um, this, is, this is going to be a landmark. This is the new visual between Windsor and Detroit. What impact do they have on the projected costs? Um, again, I'll give you, we'll have more discussion about costs uh, once we reach financial close. What stood out about Bridging North America as opposed to the other two Um, as I stated in the technical briefing, and I will state that the presentation that I delivered will be available on our website following this, uh, following this event. Um, all, three, all three proposals were evaluated on an equal basis, um, independently, according to, according to skilled evalu evaluators. Ultimately, Bridging North America became the preferred proponent because they scored highest on the, on the merits of their proposal based on evaluation criteria. So I can't really speak to the details of the proposal itself. Again, these are a lot of the details that we'll be able to share at the financial close stage um, and as part of the ongoing consultation that we'll undertake with communities on both sides of the border once our design and construction phase starts. But to be clear, um, the evaluation process resulted in Bridging North America being the, uh, the most, the highest scoring proponent. Just to underscore the comments again about uh, the Cable State Bridge, and again, just to reiterate what uh, was said, I mean, we're going to be the longest uh, uh, Cable State Bridge in North America, 853 meters as a clear span, with towers rivaling the height of the Renaissance Center. That clearly is going to change the landscape of Windsor, Detroit. This is going to be a landmark <coughs> for the area. I'll talk about the workers and I'll get uh, Heather to speak to the community benefits. We've been working very closely with uh, organizations on both sides of the border in Detroit and Windsor uh, to talk about, to have them, get them prepared for this incredible job opportunities that are going to be coming the way during the construction and eventually during the operations of the bridge. Um, we have a very, uh, uh, a very uh, well-versed team who have done other major infrastructure projects both in Canada and the United States. Uh, it will be up to them to, uh, to uh, bring the workers to the fore. Uh, but certainly people have already been starting to get ready. Uh, we have lots of groups who have come to us uh, asking what type of jobs would be available. Uh, so we don't anticipate any problems with this. Um, 
Regarding community benefits, uh, we're following the direction and the requirements set out in the crossing agreement for our delivery of community benefits, which has identified that our private sector partner, once identified, will be responsible for the delivery of community benefits. An important aspect of developing a community benefit plan is to, re to reflect the feedback of community members of, from both Windsor and Detroit. Uh, that's why WDBA undertook a very extensive consultation uh, process on community benefits and why we provided all of the feedback that we received through that consultation process to all three of our proponent teams. Uh, during our open process, um, our proponent teams were able to meet with community members. We hosted community group to proponent meetings uh, in both Windsor and Detroit, which were attended by over 100 uh, not-for-profit community agencies. Throughout that process, the community agencies were able to speak to each proponent team in an equal and transparent manner um, and provide some feedback to the proponents about what they would like to see included in the community benefits plan. I would like to mention that Bridging North America themselves, many representatives from their team came down, um, toured uh, the regions of both Windsor and Delray, Detroit, and talked to some of our community leaders. Um, again, to get a good sense and a good feel of the types of community benefits that would best represent this very unique and individualized uh, project. Um, as part of their technical requirements, each team did provide a community benefits plan that reflected that community input that we've received. So the plans are basically completed, and again, we'll be able to go in much more detail about those once we've hit financial close. We'll be able to take a few more questions, and then we'll have a scrum. Any other questions? Rod. Yeah, from Long Beach, California, I'm just curious about it. I know the notion of schedules. Is 2023 still the expected completion date for the bridge? Um, I'm not going to crystal ball anything. I mean, I'd love to. What I will tell you is that we're, we're going to be working now to we reach financial close by the end of September. At that time, we'll be informed of what the actual construction schedule will be in the uh, in Cerro State. That's the, uh, that will be not known until then. Anything else? Tom. Uh, John. Uh, given uh, some of the uh, uh, noise on the Detroit side, uh, from the Maroon family and so on, are any anticipated problems going ahead do you think anything could trip this summer? Will it? I'm going to have uh, our chair answer that question. Our focus is getting this bridge built. Oh. Apologize. <laughs> our focus is getting this bridge built. This has support on both sides of the border, federal, provincial, state, national level in the United States. The people of Michigan have actually cast a ballot on this. We're proceeding. To build this link, we have, uh, I think we've been challenged in court some 25 times. I think we've won every lawsuit. I anticipate more. I think we're back in court uh, in a couple of weeks. We will bring every effort to bear on making sure this project continues. You know, I was reminded the first formal process in this started in 2000. And this is really the beginning of the end. Now the construction starts and we have fought off every challenge imaginable and I can assure you that the governments of Canada and Michigan, the signatories to this, remain committed not only to get this thing built but to get started just as soon as we can and that is literally days and weeks away. So without, I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. We're talking about a 30 year um, uh, concession period for the, uh, for the bridge. Uh, 125 years, the, the bridge lifespan, in, which is what, what is normal. Uh, looking at the, the acquisition of properties, MDOT is our partner in this. They're looking after the acquisition. Uh, we've been assured that we'll have all the properties as we require them to start the construction. Uh, we have no concerns with that whatsoever. What would the time frame be to wrap that up? 
Um, I, I don't, I, again, I wouldn't, I don't like crystal balling uh, anything like this. Um, certainly they've been working very hard. If you take a look at where we were just a few months ago with property acquisition, where we are today, it's considerably uh, higher. Uh, we're continuing again today with property acquisition and we will do it until we have them all, all in, in place. So without uh, any further ado, I would invite people. Uh, we do have a video booth outside, so you too can be a star. I would ask you to uh, take a few moments to tell us what the Gordy Howe International Bridge means to you. On a personal note, I want to thank the people that I work with who were in the office until 11.30 last night, uh, stuffing uh, uh, and photocopying and doing things like this, and back in the office at 6 o'clock this morning um, to help bring this announcement here today. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Merci beaucoup. Bye-bye.